Okay, so this morning we're going to be looking at a, uh, a 1980 Yamaha IT250. It's uh, most definitely a project bike. It's uh, obviously been left out outside. Uh, the sun's got to it. Uh, it's got a bit of corrosion. The, uh, the throttle's um, seized on, but the, uh, the actual bike itself, uh, the, the engine turns over, it sparks. Um, the jets are clear in the carb. Um, the, there's no chain on it, so I'm assuming that the chain had locked up. Um, rusted, rusted solid. I'm assuming someone's cut it off. Um, goes into gear, selects all the gears. So uh, I'm just going to do a little, little video walk around of it, and then uh, we'll see if we can get it started before I can uh, put it. So up like I say, this is a 1980 Yamaha IT250. So the ITs are the enduro, the enduro bikes. So the YZs were the most cross bikes. 1980, so it's a G model. Um, and as you can see, the seat cover has uh, has perished. There is uh, <laughs> the front mud guards perished quite badly. Uh, and these things make the bike look a lot worse than what it actually is, really. Um, the tank. The tank is split. This is a common thing with IT tanks. Uh, these blue tanks, for some reason, um, they do that. It's something to do with the pigment, I believe, that they used to colour to colour the tanks. Made them go like that. But when you look at it, when you look at the rest of the bike, the metal components, I mean, the chrome has started to go through on the forks, but uh, the actual forks themselves look good. The front wheel, the front wheel looks good. Okay, the spokes could do with replacing, really. But you could you could get the get the rust off them, and they'd be perfectly serviceable. There's no dents on that front wheel at all. The frame, other than being a little bit rusty where the paint's gone through, it looks perfectly okay. Uh, the uh, this white on the on the engine casing that'll that'll just brush off, really. Uh, these were magnesium casings, and in the in the container with the the salt water, they always go white like that. Same with the the brake plates. That rear wheel again, that's looking nice, nice and round, no dents in it. Doesn't even look as though it's had many tyre changes. You can normally tell because they're uh, they're scuffed. Uh, the exhaust itself is okay. The front pipe has got a few a few dents and bashes on it, but uh, she's all all together. She's not too bad. I have seen a lot lot worse. Like I say, turns over with compression, um, sparks. The jets are clear in the carb. Um, the the throttle is seized, uh, but I can operate the throttle by uh, by pulling the pulling the cable there, and the kill switch isn't working. But uh, I can disconnect the power uh, by separating separating those two wires, so uh, that will prevent it from sparking. So if uh, if she does start to rev up, then. Uh, that's assuming that I get it running. To be fair, uh, let's uh, pump her, pump up the uh, the bike ram ramp. I'll, in fact, see if we can do it here. Look. Right, so there we go. She's in neutral. This is sometimes difficult to do with uh, with one hand. But, uh, there we go. Down into first, and then second, third. Fourth, fifth, and six. With it being an enduro bike, it would have had the six gears to get a better top end. Back into fifth, fourth, third, second, and First, and we'll just bring it back into neutral. There we go. 
Right, let me get my camera set up and we'll see if we can get her running. Okay, so it took a few kicks to get it running. And it was a little bit awkward with the, uh, the throttle cable being... Please like this video and subscribe to my YouTube channel, just search Phoenix Motos.